Magic 95.9, Baltimore's best variety of R&B. If you're just tuning in, we're talking to the incredible Iyanla Von Zant. You know her. She's a speaker. She's an author. She's a life fixer, a television personality. <laughs> she's Miss Everything, okay? And she's here on Magic 95.9. For those who have been hiding under a rock and have not seen Iyanla Fix My Life, can you explain it? It sounds self-explanatory, but it's a little bit no, more to really it. Isn't. Well, mm-hmm. Iyanla Fix My Life is a name that the network came up with. And what I do as a minister and a life coach is I go out and uh, people write me. People mm-hmm. write me. I don't go looking for people. I know, that's right. <laughs> Trust me. Mm-hmm. And so they will write. And what I do is I go into their environment. They don't come to me. I go to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and we look at an ongoing problem or crisis in their life. And and they, I look at it. I look at the possible causes of the problem, mm-hmm. and we explore those, and usually that's demonstrated by people's behavior. Mm-hmm. If you behaved yourself into something, you can behave yourself out. Mm-hmm. And I look at possible causes, and then I offer possible solutions and and behaviors and ways of thinking and perspectives, and then I leave them to do their work. So the truth is, I don't do the fixing. The fix is that I can go in and assess, and I assess as a therapist, I mean, as a coach, as a minister, not as a therapist. Okay. So I, I'm not looking, there are some things I can't coach, mm-hmm. you know, certain mental health issues I, I can't coach. I can't coach grief. Grief is a natural unfolding process. Mm-hmm. I can't coach that. Yeah. Uh, I can't coach an addiction. Or I can, chemical I can, imbalance. Yeah, yeah, chemical imbalance. I, I can coach someone into therapy, into treatment. We can do an intervention. So um, that's what I do. And the reason I do it is because so many people, black, white, old, young, we are suffering. Mm-hmm. And people suffer in silence because no one ever taught us how to have conversations about uncomfortable topics. We don't want to deal with we don't want problems. we don't know how we don't want to. to acknowledge them. We don't know how to. Mm-hmm. We don't know how to tell the truth. We don't know how to ask for what we want. We don't know how to say no. We don't know how to have uncomfortable conversations. So one mm-hmm. of the intentions for Fix My Life, there are seven intentions, and one of them is to create conversations mm-hmm. that force people to look at how they do what they do. And sometimes you create conflict, but not in a negative way. But sometimes people need to face that conflict to deal with themselves, you yeah. know? I don't create the conflict. Mm-hmm. I just reveal the issue. Okay. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And if the conflict means that uh, agreement or disagreement. Mm-hmm. I don't need people to agree with me. I'm not doing anything they need right. to agree with. If you invite me into your home to talk to you about your problem, how does an outsider get to tell me how to do that? <laughs> It's the weirdest thing to me. Mm-hmm. But you know, in this age of, of social media and instant gratification, everybody thinks they have to have something to say yes. about everything. Yes. Uh, I follow two leads. The first one is the lead of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. The second lead is the intention of the person that's invited me into their life. Mm-hmm. I have to ask you this question, and, and I grappled with whether or not I was going to ask, ask you. Me. But I have to because I'm a journalist and because I'm me. Okay. I love you, I love your show, I love your books, all that stuff. But when I saw the Fix My Life with DMX, it was hard for me to watch. And after I watched the show, I was mad at you. I was like, I'm mad at Iyala because I felt like there you you are brutally honest, which I love. I am brutally honest. But I feel that there is a line between being brutally honest and being brutal. And in my opinion, from watching and me not being an an expert at what you do and me not being an expert at recognizing addiction problems and and issues, I walked away feeling like that was mean. I was like, she was just mean. And and I, I was mad at you for a good little minute. So I wanted to ask you to explain to me what didn't I get about that episode for me to walk away feeling how I felt. And, and I love your shows. I love almost everything you do. But that one episode just left me like... Well, it's very interesting because those who control the words and images control the minds of the people. Mm-hmm. I'm, I was with DMX three days. You mm-hmm. saw 48 minutes. Mm-hmm. True. Mm-hmm. You don't know how many B words he called me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You don't know how, until the mm-hmm. point where... We had security on the set. Wow. And security had to really 
restrain my son mm -hmm. because my son is not accustomed mm -hmm. to hearing mm -hmm. men call me out my name. I know that's mm -hmm. right. I was a fat B, a black B, a stupid B. Mm -hmm. um, the number of times that he raised up and and really became aggressive, yeah. stepping into my energy because he was high. Yeah. And if you watch the show, I asked him early on, "Are you high?" Mm -hmm. And he said no. So now I'm going to believe what you tell me and I'm going to do my work. The mm -hmm. other thing is, they, DMX and his family came to me. I didn't go looking mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And one of my prerequisites is willingness. My guests have to be willing. But when you are media savvy... You can see every media opportunity as a way to promote your cause, your yes. issue, your name. Mm -hmm. And so once we got there, it was an opportunity for my brother to promote himself. Number one, he was a day late. Are you serious? Uh, yes, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. And like I said, those who control the words and images control the minds of the people. Mm -hmm. So what you saw, you thought that was it. I sat in a hotel and waited for him for a day. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then the day he was supposed to show up at 10 o'clock in the morning, he got there at 7 o'clock in the evening. <gasps> Hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars. Yeah. But because of who he was and because he came to us and because his son and his ex-wife really wanted some support we waited uh, and again you know until I just had enough and I said you will never mm -hmm. get the opportunity to talk to me again because over the days and over the times like I said I was a fat bee a dumb bee a stupid bee and you have to protect yourself yeah well it wasn't even about protecting myself I I, I, I endured the the disrespect. I'm an elder. Mm -hmm. I'm your elder. I'm old enough to be his mother. In fact, I'm older than his mother. Wow. Um, I endured the disrespect. I didn't receive it as a personal affront mm -hmm. because in my spirit, I knew that he wasn't in his right mind. He, right. Was, he was chemically altered, mm -hmm. but he insisted that he wasn't. He continued to insist that he wasn't. So again, um, you saw 48 minutes of three days. You wow. don't know that he was a day late. Mm -hmm. You don't know that he brought a little child with him, five or six years old, and, and, and had, was dragging her through all manner of, of unnecessary things, yeah. you know. So, it, but it was his daughter. Uh, and s there were a lot of things going on that people didn't see. And still, in the cut and in the edit, the intention was to show what happens when a person loses their identity in the midst of their career. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, he's DMX and what else? Yeah. And what else? Because once he lost his income earning potential as DMX, he, he lost his grounding and his footing. Yeah. That's what his wife was concerned about. Mm -hmm. That's what his son was concerned about. And she came to us because she wanted a reconnection between them. Mm -hmm. That was the goal of the show. Wow. I did that. I did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes the hardest thing for any of us to do, especially people with an addiction, is to look in that mirror. Because when what you see looking back is some ugliness that you're not ready to deal with, it's... But see, his intention hard. wasn't clear. His wife and his son had a clear intention. Mm -hmm. He went along with it. His intention was to promote himself as DMX. I got it. And when I stepped in, and I didn't know that. I didn't know that till I got there. Right. And when I stepped in, and I'm trying to really, like, you know, deal with the issue, he got upset with me. But like I said, in, out of respect for him, we didn't play oh, some, yeah. of, some of it because wow. we were telling a, a particular story. But a, another point, just... Be mindful of what you see and don't see mm -hmm. on the television. Mm -hmm. mm. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Those who control mm -hmm. the words and images mm -hmm. control the minds of the people. Speaking of truth and people not liking truth sometimes, you have a book out. Trust, the f mastering the four essentials, trusting God, trusting yourself, trusting other people, and trusting the process. Because in this upheaval that we are in the mm -hmm. world today, um, 
people don't have trust and they're right. afraid mm -hmm. and they're afraid of, of taking chances and they're afraid of, of, of following their dreams and they're afraid that they're not going to have what they need. So I, I hope people will learn how to trust, first of all, themselves and second of all, the benevolence of the universe mm -hmm. and of their source and of their creator. And then learning how to trust in relationships after you've been hurt or betrayed or had your heart broken. And then learning how to trust the process of life. So those are, those are the four essentials. And, you know, it's a great um, time for us to really learn about trust. I think that's a book that everybody needs. So. <laughs> how can people pre-order it? Can people pre-order yeah, it? Yeah, right go now? to Amazon.com. You can pre-order it. Or uh, you can come to my website, theyanla.com. Mm -hmm. um, and and it and it's there, you know. And also in the Baltimore area, I find this very interesting. You know, I have a school where I train. I have a personal development program in Maryland, and I train coaches and ministers in Maryland. Good stuff. And I always see people text me all over. Oh, come here, come here. No, no, come to me. Mm -hmm. I have a whole institution for you. I love <laughs> it. I love it. Innervisionsworldwide.com. Mm -hmm. Innervisionsworldwide. And you can, our new personal development class starts in July. Okay. Our new coaching class starts in July. So you can get all the information at innervisionsworldwide.com. And, and I say that because I had a student, she graduates in June, mm -hmm. who comes to me every month from Mozambique. Are you serious? I have two that come from Holland, women of color, wow. who come to me from Holland. I have another one who comes from uh, the Bahamas. And people can't get to me from Baltimore. It's the most bizarre thing. I've never... <laughs> I don't understand. Where but there's they a will, me, there's a way. They text me, I need you. I want, can you come to mm -hmm. me? No, 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 no. Come, to, come me. to me. I have a whole school. So everything that I do on Fix My Life and everything that I write about in mm -hmm. my books, I will teach you the process for doing it. That for is yourself awesome. and in the world. 